This is within our community, you often see people who have acquired wealth. They've done it either slinging weight, mm-hmm. selling drugs, or through entertainment, sports, and entertainment. Why is it important for you to showcase people who are average? everyday people who have gone to college, people may who may not have gone to college, but people who have started businesses and created wealth. Why is that important for you guys? Mm. And I, the reason why we say that's important is it's not just for us, it's for the community. We wanted to show the community that there are role models outside of those original car- categories that you said. Everybody don't have to be a dope boy. Everybody's not going to be a next professional athlete. Um, Everybody's not going to be a a comedian. So we wanted to showcase and show our community in a different light. We wanted to show that our people, we're more than just being entertainers, Mm -hmm. dope boys, and things like that. We wanted to actually showcase and show our community that there's other avenues that you can become successful and make way more money than Mm -hmm. being an athlete or being an entertainer. Because what people don't realize is if you're an athlete or if you're a rapper or whatever you are, you're still getting paid like you're on salary. Mm -hmm. And they're still next to you at the rate of a nine to five worker. Like you're on a, a, what is it? You, you on net, you in, you're a consumer. Yeah. You're in that category. You're not producing for the economy. You could be a consumer business owner in that sense. You're an employee. I mean, yeah, so we basically just wanted to show our community that it's larger larger than that to, to us and just show them that, hey, real estate is an option. Stocks is an option. Owning a business mm-hmm. is an option. Like, those are other options that you can have. And we know that it's not for everyone, but at least we want to show people that these are some options and some avenues that you can take and that you can actually make a difference in. And you don't have to go risk your life. You don't have to risk your body, risk getting a knee blown out. Even if you are an athlete, if your knee gets blown out or if you get seriously injured, guess what? That's all your money going there. So now how are you going to start to provide for your family? And to piggyback off of what Jalen was saying, just to add, like, when it comes to this, not only, like, with all that other stuff, when it comes to these other categories that we were talking about, like, you're real limited in the amount of people that can be successful. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this business game and this entrepreneurship, like, you can really, you determine your salary. You You can create more opportunities based on the time you put in, the connections you create, Like, it's a lot more opportunities out here to create money without having to rely on your body or your own, like, just some physical attribute that you have or, like, the, uh, like, a very minor, like, I'm trying to see what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not a lot of spots. And, like, I always like it to look at it with the NFL, right? Everybody think they want to go to the NFL in our community, NFL, NBA. NFL only got, like, what? 52-man roster? A couple thousand spots? NBA only got a couple hundred spots. Like, everybody can't go there. But we can all own businesses. We can all take advantage of the different tax deductions that we can have if you have a business structure and you know how to play the game the correct way. Um, Yeah. No, that's well said. It's well said, and it's great uh, insight. In in speaking of insight, how, how many people have you guys interviewed on your podcast, would you say? Hmm. Rough. Uh, roughly around 90. Yeah, around 90 people so okay. far. Okay. So is there a common thread? Is there a, a similarity, a similarity or something that you can say all successful people have? Now that you've interviewed highly successful interview um people within our community, is there a thread that runs through all of them? There is. And it's it's really interesting whenever you start to think about it and you start to see it, because once you start to examine those successful people, you can tell the difference really kind of like immediately with successful people. They're willing to go above and beyond for once for one, like they know exactly what their goal is and they're not going to stop until they reach that goal. Um, and they don't really let limitations stop them. Mm-hmm. A lot of successful people, they don't see, 
they don't see limits. They see ways to get around the limits. Mm -hmm. They, they figure out ways to be successful. Another thing that I see successful people, a lot of pretty much everyone that we've interviewed is they understand they can't do it all on their own. They're un they understand the power of teamwork and they understand that, Hey, I need solid people around me who can help me take me further. I wanted to I'll let you, uh, with that, I mean, just go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought that that was a, a great answer. It, have you got, because we're taught many of us it, when I was coming up, becoming an entrepreneur, that was, it wasn't something that was glamorized or, or even promoted in the way that it's promoted today. I think you guys have a, an advantage. Your generation has an advantage over my generation or even the generations before me because, you know, we were always taught go to school, mm -hmm. get higher education, get a job, work 30, 40 years, retire, and that's when you live your life. So, but, you know, and you just speaking to so many entrepreneurs, when do you guys find is the best time for anybody who's working a job to set out on their own? Because right now, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but not everybody knows how to become an entrepreneur. And even if they have this incredible idea, most people are handcuffed to that paycheck. They're handcuffed to the idea that... Every other week, I'm going to have a direct deposit straight to my bank, and I have health care. Being out here as an entrepreneur, you know, for a person like me who's been an entrepreneur for over 20 plus years, this is the only life I know. But for somebody who's been working the majority of their adult life, taking that leap of faith is very, very, it's scary you know, it, 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 it's downright to where people are like, no, you know, I, I, I know I could possibly make it out there, but I'm just too afraid to take that, that, that risk. So when would you say the best time for anybody to leave their job and take that leap of faith and bet on themselves would be? Yeah. Hmm. So to me, it's really, it's never going to be a perfect time, but you should have like some check boxes in order before you, before you decide that you want to just jump off the porch. So as a person now, this is, I think I'm 11 months into full-time entrepreneurship. I quit my job last month and all that stuff you, uh, not last month, last year in December, that was the last time I had a job. Um, and whenever I was going through that, it was like, that, that very thing you were talking about, that mental block of like wanting to be like, man, I, I'm not going to get this check. I'm not going to get this check. But the thing you need to do to combat that is, I say, first, you need to have that six month emergency fund. Like before you consider jumping off the porch with anything, you need to make sure that you have your finances in order and that you're going to be able to sustain yourself at your current level for at least six months to a year. And when I say six months, I mean, if you got a six month emergency fund and you're trying to jump off the porch, you better already have something in the works that's already generating profits. You can't just be like, oh, I got this emergency fund. I'm going to figure it out. No, you need to already have something that's already showing that this can be a viable option before jumping off the porch. I know for me, uh, it was a time where like I'm sitting here, I'm at the job and I'm looking at the business, make this much money. And it's like, yo. The business is making this and I'm over here. This is taking away time from me being able to build into my business. So whenever it gets to that point, that's whenever you really should consider it because now you, you it's actually hurting you mm. to be there because you have more potential to earn and continue to grow in that business. And yeah, I'll piggyback off of that too, because uh, I've been a full-time entrepreneur uh, over a year now, uh, as of this month, a few days ago, actually, on the 17th of October. And um, same thing for me. Um, I was at work, and I kind of left before David, but I saw the potential because, like he said, we had something in the works, and I was seeing what was coming through, but I was also getting in trouble at work for being on my phone trying to take care of my business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, 
it's coming to a point where I'd rather take care of myself and my business to make sure that what I have is going to last versus being tied down here. And um, like he said, you got to have that six month to a year emergency fund. And one thing with us, with Black Earth Renaissance, we're all money in. Like we have not taken any money out. So I'm not even going to lie to you. I kind of did jump off the porch and I didn't have any more money coming in. So what that did was that made me more hungry too, though. So come January, we're figuring out, okay, how can we start cranking out $10,000 months? How can we start cranking out $20,000 months? So now it really lights that fire up under you because once you're in that entrepreneur world, you kill what you eat. If you don't kill anything, you're going to starve. You're going to be hungry. Like you're going to be hungry. And I'm not going to lie. There's months that I was hungry. Like, it's like, damn, you got to figure it out. But it, it, it sharpens you. And I do want to say entrepreneurship is not for the mentally weak person. If you know that you're not able to take on pressure or if you know that you're not able to do certain things and you'll be able to get stressed out or s- small things overwhelm you, I'm going to be honest. I don't think full-time entrepreneurship is for you. But that doesn't mean that building generational wealth and investing isn't for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that you just said that, Jay. Uh, I I recently interviewed with uh, Damon Dash, Mm -hmm. and he and I argued on that one point right there. Because I don't believe entrepreneurship is for everyone. I just don't. You have to be built for this. Thanks. There is going to be setbacks. There's going to be disappointments. There's going to be letdowns. There's going to be things you couldn't even predict, conceive, or plan for that come up every day. And if you are not mentally tough, if you are not a person who is resilient mm-hmm. and willing to get knocked down and not just get back up, but get back up and figure it out. Mm. This is not for you. And that's okay. It it really is. And and I I was speaking to him and I was like, you know, I don't think it's for everybody. He, you know, Dame being the the, the aggressive personality he is, you know, he argued me down on that point. Everyone is an entrepreneur. And I I love that you just said that because I don't want to put, number one, false hope out to people. Mm Mm-hmm this is a very difficult lifestyle. It really is. Like you said, you eat what you kill. There is nobody that is putting a paycheck in your account every other week. And getting so, and I remember when I first started out in this game, a mentor of mine told me, he said, Sean, one of the hardest things in the world to do is get somebody to write you a check. And, and that's just the truth. Like, you know, getting people to part with their money is difficult. So I think that it's very, very, I, I love that you brought these points up. Both of you guys really tapped on some great, great points. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.